Welcome South Africa. We are joined by the chairman and founder of Gift of the Givers, Dr. Imtia Suleiman, in a very exclusive interview. My name is Denver Naika. This is The Get Real Show. Hi, this is Dr. Imtia Suleiman, chairman and founder of Gift of the Givers. You're watching me on The Get Real Show on Glow TV with Denver Naika. Hi, Dr. Imtia Suleiman. Welcome to the Get Real Show. Hi, Denver. Thank you very much for having me on Glow TV and hello to your viewers. Wow, I think they're so excited. I'm so excited myself. I mean, we've waited such a long time to speak to you. You're such a great man. I mean, you've been associated with legends in South Africa and across the world. But let's get to know you're a doctor by profession. How did this actually start? I mean, giving back to the community so wholeheartedly. It's not something that I initiated. It's not something that I thought about. And the viewers have to understand this is something very spiritual. And sp spirituality is the essence of life. And a lot of people need to understand that. I met a spiritual teacher in Turkey, in Istanbul, in 91. I went back in 92. Because I fell in love with this man and what I saw. On the 6th of August, 1992, on a Thursday night, the man spoke in fluent Turkish. He made eye contact with me and made eye contact heavenwards. And in fluent Turkish, and I don't understand a word of Turkish, but I understood every single word that he said in Turkish. And he said, my son, I'm not asking you, I'm instructing you to form an organization. The name in Arabic will be Wakful Wakifin. Translated, it means gift of the givers. It will serve all people of all races, all religions, all colors, all classes, all cultures, of any geographical location and of any political affiliation, but you will serve them unconditionally. This is an instruction for the rest of your life. Remember, and this is very important from a spiritual point of view, that whatever you do is done through you and not by you. And it started off on that night and it's going, it'll be 30 years on the 6th of August this year. But doctor, I mean, let's, let's go back a little bit uh, into this whole transition that has happened. I mean, you've had a spiritual um, leader that had come up to you, given you this insight as to what your life was going to look like in the next couple of years. What ran through your mind, you being a doctor, who has a professional field, also giving back uh, to the community. I mean, what emotions ran through you? Well, when I saw the teacher the first time in 91, I realized that I wanted to be part of this. It was a spiritual order mm -hmm. in Turkey. And I know that whatever he said was something important. So when he gave the instruction, at that point, I didn't understand the magnitude of the instruction. Mm -hmm. Because at some point I asked him, I said, you know, you gave me this instruction. What do you actually mean? And what am I supposed to do? Because I'm a doctor in private practice. I have three surgeries in a place called Peter Marisburg in South Africa. So what exactly do you want me to do? And he told me one line. You will know. And in 30 years, I do know what to do. And he told me over various visits that it will get bigger, that people from all over the world will come to you, that you will, you will reach out to many more places and you'll do a lot of things that you don't understand now. And he said a lot of things that I'm telling you will only become clearer to you later in your life. And that's exactly what's happening even now, 30 years later. It's unfolding. And I made up my mind, okay, it, it was directed to me. The moment I walked out of that place, mm. I got a sort of a, a, a feeling and inspiration respond to the civil war in Bosnia. And the same month, I took in 32 containers of aid into Bosnia. In November, I took in another eight containers of aid. And in 93, we started building a containerized mobile hospital. And as those things were happening, it came to me that disaster was going to be our main intervention, our main focus of the organization. And then, as I said, you will know, people came to, the, to, to with this, then I set up an office, people came and said, you know what, my child needs a bursary. So we brought in a bursary project. Somebody said, you know what, we need support for the soup kitchen. So we supported soup kitchens. And then we set up our own. And then people said, you know, there's people that's hungry at home, they need food parcels. And somebody needs a wheelchair. And someone needs a medical intervention. And somebody needs water. So over a period of time, and people said, we need counseling. You know, we, we don't know what to do. And we need support groups. And we need assistance to, to help our t kids grow up. And school said, we want uh, stationery. And they want sports fields. And they want computer labs. So like that, every time I didn't initiate it, it came to me. As the teacher said, you will know. So whatever I needed to do came to me. Like in, in 2013, my friend calls me from Yemen and says a South African couple is taken hostage. And we got involved in hostage negotiations and taking people out to were taken hostage. So it's put in front of you. It's not something you plan or you do. There is no planning. In 30 years, there has been no planning. It just happens. 
and it's very difficult to explain but things come to you people come to you requests come to you and you just know okay i must do this people start saying we need fodder for the animals so it's to provide food for the animals then they said there's no water they need bowls then we put up housing it's a whole different kind of things that we do but it's brought to us doctor again uh, do you choose the type of communities that you get involved with the type of diversity is that you you your involvement is with no the teacher was very it's emph emphatic he said he used the arabic word nas nas in quran means mankind mm. in the holy book and said so mankind means everybody unconditionally no question of race religion color class whether they believe or don't believe is not your business your business to help human beings and creation whatever difficulty they have in the best way possible unconditionally not expecting anything in return so that's what we do you know we just help wherever we can it doesn't really make any difference to us we don't actually said you don't expect any thanks you do it unconditionally you don't ask for anything you give it in a very dignified way and you leave and that's how we do it and doctor what about the funding i mean this is this is quite an expensive project because you're not giving one or two you're giving out in the millions sometimes in the billions uh, throughout south africa and again you've ventured out uh, into many other countries i mean you were you're well known throughout the world i would say as a policy we don't have fundraisers we don't have any staff who to collect money okay that's our policy because the spiritual teacher said you will never look for money and believe me then actually when the uct fire happened we actually had to tell people please don't send any more money mm. don't send any more goods we have enough so people come to us they look fast they find us we announce what we're doing and the queues just get long that people want to donate to us i'm going to put you in a spot now i mean you've been giving back and giving back and giving back and not expecting anything in return you're now being acknowledged uh, profoundly in south africa and everyone is talking about you you're seeing your name in the newspapers you're on the news you're everywhere how does it make you feel to know you know what um, and again this is a get real show so we get a little bit realistic at certain times i mean how does it make you feel to know you know what i'm giving back and a little bit of acknowledgement is coming my way is it something you feel or you feel like you know what no i'm uh, this is not for me i'm not expecting anything in return no from a youth point of view you appreciate the acknowledgement because appreciating that or getting the acknowledgement is also a reflection of what people think of my teams mm. because people also say that those teams don't expect any acknowledgement they work monday to sunday they work in public holidays they work morning to night during the covid they took the risk during the unrest they went into the areas the case that in floods all the difficulty they've been in the different areas now what the, the the water situation in the eastern cape in uh, uh, nelson mandela bay the teams are working they expect nothing in return they put their heads down and they move so to me when that acknowledgement comes i always pass it on to the teams and say this is because of you they recognizing what you do because i as a person can't do all this i can't be in other places at the same time and also it comes back to the same message the most important message of having no ego the mm -hmm. teacher said that whatever you do is done through you and not by you and he said the day you forget that the gift is gone so and you understand that the kind of things that you do is just not humanly possible it's the speed at which it happens how people come to us how everything is put you know there's a higher hand working so in actual, in actual fact that acknowledgement is an acknowledgement of a higher hand behind you mm. and you need to understand that doctor you I, i can see you very religious and i'm sure our viewers are gauging that all at the same time we'll be back after this Welcome back if you've just joined us we are in a very very exclusive interview with one of the most uh, renowned uh, individuals in South Africa and throughout the world Dr Imtia Suleiman Dr you know we were chatting about uh, your organization how does the funding works because we everyone knows you give out in the millions and you yourself uh, are not working uh, for a, as an establishment you are a doctor by profession but we realize that that sort of a field is something that you've put to rest so how does an individual like yourself personally survive in this in this place that we call that we need to live in we hide this several ways one is everybody in the organization gets paid including me mm. you know there's this companies come forward and as they give you money for administration specifically for administration yeah. so that's a form of income secondly in my private practice i had never any accounts 
I bought my house, I bought cars, everything in those days and set it up. Yeah. Then I was involved in a nutrition company and I was a consultant to many people right. and that brought in money. Right. And then of course we had different type of investments. But currently it's, 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 a, it's a minimum type of like honorarium for, for the kind of work that I do. And because I was not too interested in money, I, my house is paid off, my cars are paid off, mm. everything is paid off. And part of the organization, it's a standard facility for all the staff and organization that we have. So, you know, there's a payment through there, but corporate companies fund that part specifically. You know? and, and in terms of the organization itself, we don't look for money. As I mentioned, we don't have fundraisers. Mm. We just make an announcement and we all believe it. You know, even before we make an announcement, money can just comes, comes in. I was studying what an, a, a consul general of a, of a big country recently, and the, and the person called me and she said, I want to ask you a question. She said, I went to the government, the provincial government in KZN, to offer them the services of our country to give them money. And the government officials told me, told the lady, give the money to gift of the givers. So she said, I can't understand that the government official said, give you the money. Yeah. And I said, the whole of South Africa says, give you the money. And I said, yes, that's the sentiment for years now because we're transparent. Mm -hmm. The media travels with us. They saw we give. There's no religious issues. It's purely humanitarian, you know, and more and more companies are coming. And the only reason they gave us money is all our paperwork is correct. They see the balance sheets, they see the audit statements. And after the second and third time, they don't even ask for that anymore. They just come in and they multiply the amount of money that they give us. I said even SARS donates to us. The Auditor General donates to us. The Reserve Bank passes our application to send money out of the country. It's 30 years now. There is no issue. Auditing companies donate to us. The big companies donate to us. And they have the due diligence. Now we've got American organizations and American companies and European companies and British companies all go through the due diligence test. And after doing it the first time, they never worry us the second time. It's a very, right now we're busy with uh, Gates Foundation. They, they look at us. We're busy with Ford Foundation, CAF in America, uh, Walmart, Anglo-American, Implants, Genco, you know, uh, Exxon, there's, uh, yeah, Exxon. There's so many, all the big banks, all come to us. And it actually, it's, it's in a very honorable position or a very mm -hmm. fortunate position where we actually tell the corporates when we can talk to them. They don't tell us when, you know, you will listen in the queue and we will get to you when you can. We have to tell them when we can get to them. That's the amount of interest people have in us. Am ambassadors from different countries have come to us to talk to us. Sweden, Canadian, uh, American Consul General, mm. uh, uh, Turkish, uh, Australian, all come to talk to us from different countries. Everybody wants our view on the country itself and what we're doing. All the big finance houses, the big banks, call us to address their company staff. And I've done 60 this, uh, presentations this year already. I've got another 45 confirmed for the rest of the year and it keeps growing. Where people call you to present to big corporate companies because they believe in what you do and what you say. Wow, that's, that's like goosebump moments. Let's talk about, I mean, you, you gave back uh, during the hundreds, you gave back... I mean, that was, again, I think we literally a year into it, uh, we're looking at it now in July. Uh, we had the flooding recently, you were part of it. Uh, there's so much that you've been a part of it. I mean, again, how do you involve yourself in all these initiatives? And you are the first uh, that's, I'm there, I'm going to sort this out. Gift of the Givers, as I said, uh, you know, after we did the, 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 the response to Bosnia, it was clear we, we were going to be a disaster response agency. Mm -hmm. And over a 30 year period, We've developed ourselves, you know, in, in one of the world's best. We, like for example, if you take Cyclone Idai, mm. the Cyclone hit Mozambique, Malawi, and, uh, and Zimbabwe at the same time. Right. And at that point, there were floods in Devon. We had teams in all those countries simultaneously. Right. When we started off, we were very small. We could do a few projects a year, a yeah. million rand a year, yeah. three million rand a year. And that has gone in hundreds of millions per year. Right. So, although we don't have that much of a staff complement, we only have 90 full time. We don't have any volunteers. Right. Our staff are all full time because we need them to be on site. It's a disaster. We can't wait for people to come. They must know the system. So, we've got 90 full time staff in South Africa. We have 400 worldwide, but of which 320 run a hospital in Syria. It's all medical teams, you know, and we have offices in other parts of the world. So we've specialized in, in, in disaster management and all the projects that we do. And we also have a team that does hydrology, that does drilling, that does building, that does construction. You know, we have different types of people that we contract to. They become part of us. And we just subcontract it and we know exactly what we want. We want quality work. We don't compromise on quality. We want world-class service and world-class things that we do, like how we, we want to do it for ourselves, if we had that kind of money. 
So, you know, it's, it's very specialized and we've grown over the years. And we know the system. And my staff are trained. They can do a disaster in their sleep. They know, everyone knows exactly what to do. The only volunteers we have are the search and rescue teams and the, and the and medical teams that come out. Because mm -hmm. they work normally in the hospital or in the surgery or wherever. But when a disaster comes, the calls come within minutes, we're ready. We're closing our surgeries, we're leaving hospital, we're taking leave, we're ready where you want us to go. Wow, uh, I think we've answered all the questions. But tell me, how does your family manage with you when you step out in public? I mean, everyone knows you. I know we're here and everyone wants to get a pic with you, including myself. I've been, I've been admiring you literally my entire life with what you do and give back. I mean, how do you manage as an individual when you step out in public? It's getting more and more difficult with each, with each day. You know, now when I do an event, if I say I'm speaking for 40 minutes, I have to allow one hour for pictures after that. And sometimes it's not a group picture. Everybody wants an individual picture. Yes. And then they want a selfie. While you're eating in the restaurant, the guy will come and just stand like you and take a picture while you're sitting and eating. You walk in the street, they stop you. Everything takes 10 times longer to do. But it's love. Okay. You know, it's, uh, it's love. It's appreciation. People love what you do. And you can't stop them from doing that. You know, I won't stop anybody. I mean, a street sweeper comes and says, I want the picture. Mm. A quarter attendant comes and says, I want the picture. The, it's, it's indicative of they love the work that you do, which of course is God's work being done through us. Yeah. So I wouldn't stop anybody. I would allow every single person to take the picture wherever I go. And some people are respectful. They say, okay, we're just waiting for you to eat. But after you eat, we're catching you. <laughs> That's what they tell you. <laughs> Mr. Suleiman, thank you so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my picture uh, with you. Thank you so much uh, for being with us here on Glow TV, on the Get Real Show. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank you for blessing our show with your presence. We'd love for you to give a small motivation to our Glow TV viewers that love you and admire you throughout South Africa. I think the most important message right now is a lot of people are feeling despondent. They're worried about the unrest. They're worried about the state of the country. They're losing hope. There's absolutely no need to lose any hope. I've traveled to war zones to different parts of the world. This is the greatest country on earth. It has fantastic people. All the challenges we have are in, not insurmountable. Standing together, we will fix it. But each one of us has to do our part. It's about active citizenry and all teaching, all religion, there's one simple philosophy. Whoever does an atom's weight of good well, shall see it. Don't do millions of rands of stuff. Just do a simple atom's weight of good. Start off with your own families, your parents, your children, your neighbors, the extended community. Do it without anybody having to know. Do it quietly in a very dignified way. Teachers who are retired, we need you back to come help those kids who are suffering with, teach uh, with learning problems. Doctors, we need your help at hospitals. People with skills, this country needs a lot of skills. Everybody who's got skills and experience, give some time back at no cost. And together, as we upskill other people and support each other with open heart, we will rebuild this country to a great glory. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. And we definitely will be catching up with you soon. And thank you again uh, for sitting with us on the Get Real Show. Thank, thank you. you so much.